<laughs> what is up, Copy Squad? It's your boy, Kyle Milligan, coming to you live from uh, Delray Beach, Florida. And today, I want to talk about the incredible perks of becoming a good copywriter. And this uh, message was inspired by a email, or I'd say an email, some YouTube comments, and some Facebook messages that I've received probably like the last seven days in a row. Like I keep getting this similar sentiment or message. Uh, coming to me. So I want to kind of address these awesome perks. You know, the <laughs> not, I'm, gonna, I'm not bragging, not yet, but um, there's a lot of perks to becoming like a great copywriter that people are very much, they're seeking, there's they're, they're, they're things that people want to get into this field for. And I kind of want to dive into a couple of them really quick. And then I want to kind of say some counterintuitive crazy stuff that's going to blow your mind. All right. So I made a little list. <clears throat> so how would I even do this? Maybe I'll just pull this to here, can I share my screen? I'm still using StreamYard, so I hope the audio and everything is good on this and you can hear it. Okay, so there's some stuff. And then I made this little note. So this is this is the basic stuff, right? Like the cool perks from being a, a great copywriter. You can work from home or work remote. Okay, cool. So essentially, like that's I think that's a big one for people who basically don't want to be tied to a desk. They're tired of their, this is actually live, yes. Brian Tate TV, glad to have you. Um, but yeah, folks who are tired of the cubicle life, they don't want to be chained to the desk, they want their freedom, they want to be able to work from home. Maybe they just want more time with their family or maybe they want to be like digital nomads and travel around. Um, so there's that, there's passive income, there's the idea that once you write a letter, it makes money, you get royalties, you can make a lot of money if it sells a lot of, a lot of product. Um, so there's all these kinds of perks and I'm going to basically turn this on his head as quickly as possible. I think I took too long to get to my point anyway. But I think all of this is the wrong stuff to ask me about. And I think it's the wrong and – and I when I get these questions, I often like shut that down immediately because I can see the, the mindset of an amateur and someone who will never achieve these perks right out of the gate. And let me, that might be a little bit harsh. I might have to dial that back a little bit, not never achieve these perks, but you are already like setting yourself up for failure. If these are the things that you're looking for, I think I've talked about, uh, some of my friends before or my family members or relatives or people from back home who I talk to and they have this dreams to make all this money or like buy a Lamborghini or go do this or, or live like in a, in a big house. And, um, you, you, you ask them about going back to work and they dread it and they hate it or they don't want to talk about it, or they aren't even concerned, or they don't even, want, they don't even think about it when they're not on the clock. So I think whenever you come talking about, like, um, you come to me saying, hey, can I can I do, can I quit the thing that I've been doing for 15, 20 years, whatever, and just be a copywriter so that I can have more time with my family? I think that's a great sort of, like, uh, it's a great headspace for, like, it's a noble goal to have more time with your family, your kids, wife, all that sort of stuff. And it's, and, and no one should frown upon you for wanting to be remote and be adventurous and go do this or that. But I think what you're missing is a giant, giant thing that's, that, that comes first and foremost is the craft. Okay. So th basically I want to set this whole live up and I, I did it very poorly and disorganized in perks versus craft. So what I think I should do is just get to this email that I recently responded to. And it also goes hand in hand with a Facebook message and some YouTube comments that I've gotten recently. And I just want to go down the list of things that I kind of mentioned. This guy's like, I think everyone kind of needs to hear this because I get this stuff all the time about, you know, making money and working from home and quitting your job. I hear it all the time. And uh, let me kind of just go down the points that I, that I gave him. Um, the first thing I said, don't get caught in the trap of looking for perks over mastering the craft. And I think, you know, this is kind of a little bit of an ironic thing for me to say because uh, I don't know, I wasn't really, I could say I was trying to get into the craft when I got into copywriting because what I was trying to do was sell more of my books. I wanted to be a writer and I got into copywriting to try to sell more novels and they're in the top shelf of that bookcase behind me, but I'm not even about that life anymore. I actually got really, really immersed in the craft of copywriting itself, but I wanted to learn that skill. I didn't want to work from home. I didn't want to write, uh, uh, I don't know, I kind of wanted to write direct response copy when I kind of learned what it was. But it, essentially, my journey into copywriting started with I wanted to get the skill. I wanted to get the craft. I wanted to understand how to do that so I could sell more stuff. Okay? So for me, it was a pursuit of the craft to begin with. It wasn't necessarily this whole thing like, oh, copywriting, work from home, work on Upwork or whatever that was. So I want to kind of set a general rule of thumb here for folks watching. The The general rule of thumb is anytime, no, I don't care if it's – if it's uh, I can tell you some pursuits. Like anytime you're looking for the result, anytime you're looking for the perks of the craft and not the craft itself, you are dooming yourself pretty much to fail. 
You're going to hit some bumps in the road as every professional does in every sort of craft that you might ever attempt. And when you hit those bumps or as uh, Seth Godin calls it the dip. Yeah, I have a book called The Dip in that bookshelf. Great book, really short book. I think it's like 80 pages maybe. When you hit the dip, you're going to quit because you don't really care about the craft. You just want that perk. And whenever you find that perk's hard to get and you don't really care about this craft, you're going to abandon it. And I see people jump from career to career, from hobby to hobby because they keep seeking this goal and they never care about the craft at all. So the thing that I told them was simple rule of thumb. If you go after the perks, you never get the perks. You go after the craft, the perks come. Okay. So if, if you can, if you can get into a mindset where you're more about practicing that craft and gaining and garnering that skill set instead of worrying about, well, will I be able to work remote? Will I be able to work from home? Will I be able to have my own hours? Will I have to work weekends? When you start asking those questions, you're not in it for the craft. You're never going to be good enough to get those perks. So that's like the ironic twist of it is even I had to move to Florida and then Baltimore for months, right? I had a girlfriend who I didn't see, I think for seven or eight months, I visited her from time to time. We visited each other on every every couple weekends, but um, I had to do that so I could learn the craft, so that I could be good enough to be remote, to write sales letters that run for over a year and pay passive income and royalties and stuff like that. Just because first thing I did was focus on the craft, and I had to sacrifice. Now um, let's let's kind of move down to that next thing, the next trap. I want to talk about this trap. Uh, so the reason I was able to do that is because I knew that those months would be a drop in the bucket, even if they were hard. But I don't want to say that the, the next trap, that's trap number one, is trying to go after the perks, not the craft. Trap number two is overlooking, like looking at where I am now and ignoring all the stuff I had to sacrifice, ignoring like all of the, the trials and things I had to do to get there. If you, if you think like, oh, well, he works from home. I want to work from home. He makes passive income. I want to make passive income. You're, you're missing a lot of big steps. So even I had to do all that. So when, whoever you're looking at and whoever you're trying to follow or emulate, you should probably check out what they did in the first couple of years if that's where you're starting as well, especially if you're starting from square one or square zero. So that's a good sign um, that you're, you're setting yourself up for failure by trying to go into the perks and ignoring the climb and trying to go straight for the end result. Okay. So the next thing I want to talk about is uh, if you start to, okay, so let's say, let's say you don't have to, I'm not saying you have to give up everything. I'm not saying quit your job, start moving somewhere or go do this or sacrifice everything. What I'm saying is you need to find a way to get yourself immersed in the craft that works for you and your lifestyle. And I think that's really important too, in that this is a great test because if you find that you are not driven to get immersed in the craft, you can't make time, you don't find it enjoyable or you get bored. Well, then that just saved you a lot of pain and heartache because you're not really in it for the craft to begin with and you were setting yourself up for failure. So that's like an easy little test, an easy little bet to make, like practice the craft. Just try that. Like if, if, um, like if you want to, if you want to be a musician and you want to go on tour, right. And you want to tour the world and be a rock star, but then you pick up a guitar and you can't practice for 20 minutes without being like, Oh, this is so boring. It's not for you. Um, let me get rid of this here. I don't know how to turn off these notifications. They might just keep coming. I, I'm actually kind of been working all day. So, um, I hope you, that doesn't bother anybody. Anyway. So yeah, if you, yeah, you want to be a musician and you want to go on tour and you'll be a rock star, but you pick up a guitar, you hate it. You hate practicing your vocals. You hate, you hate picking up the guitar or practicing the keyboard or whatever. That craft is never going to make you a rock star. Same thing with copywriting. If you can't find yourself like, analyzing sales letters, sales copy, getting, sitting down and putting fingers to keys or thinking up ideas and writing down the ideas or doing the three steps that I preach every day, you know, read some copy, write some copy and come up with an idea. If you can't get yourself immersed in that world, then you go ahead and save yourself in trouble and don't do that. Go away. Like don't go into that world. Try to try to do something that, that draws you into it like that. Okay. Then I want to talk about craftsmen. Let's talk about some craftsmen really quick. So, um, we've talked about the two traps, right? Going for perks instead of the craft, okay? Trap number two is ignoring the people's climbs who got to where they are that you're trying to, you know, get to where they are. So that don't don't miss the climb. Uh, so those are the two traps. Uh, talked about, let's talk about craftsmen and winner take all. So a lot of these ideas are, are 
you can find these really well laid out in this book called So Good They Can't Ignore You by Cal Newport. Same dude that wrote the book Deep Work, which I'm obsessed with. So I went back and read his other book, So Good They Can't Ignore You. And basically he explains all the stuff that I'm talking about, tackling the craft, getting a craftsman mindset. He calls that career capital. Now, to get to this point where you make passive income and you can call your own shots and you can work from home and you can tell the boss to F off, well, you have to have career capital built up so you can trade that in. You cash that in you get to call the shots. You basically trade career capital in for control over your life. But a lot of people are going straight for control with no career capital and ending up in the food stamps line. Okay. So good book on that. So good. They can't ignore you. Now let's talk about a couple of craftsmen. Um, and, and these are guys who basically made it and then they kept going. So first we can look at like copywriting, like, like music, musicians. I was just talking about a second ago. There's, there's M and M's and there's SoundCloud, SoundCloud rappers in the world of copywriting, right? Like, and when I say M&Ms, there's only one M&M, right? Okay, we, I can tell you the name of a guy right now who is making like 10 times more than every other copywriter. He was the guy who taught me uh, how copywriting works. The name's Evaldo, he works at Agora Financial, and he's basically the M&M of the industry right now. Like, I don't think anyone else is doing nearly as much uh, volume or sales as this guy. And he's a true craftsman. If he wanted to just make a couple bucks to quit, he could have quit. All right. So in that same realm, there's Eminem and there's SoundCloud rappers, right? You want to be a musician, you'll be a star, you want to go on tour, but you don't sit down and practice the craft. You don't write out song after song. You don't get better and study and, and build your skill set. Then you're going to be a SoundCloud rapper forever. Okay. Look at Jerry Seinfeld. He's got a documentary on Netflix called Comedian. Look up Jerry Seinfeld colon Comedian. Great documentary after he finished the show Seinfeld, where he went back into stand up. He'd already made it. He's already the most famous and successful comedian in the world, but he's a true craftsman. So he goes back on stage and practices the craft. Okay. Look at Conor McGregor. He has two belts. All right. He, he was able to go get one in one weight class. And then he says, you know what? I want to get the other weight class too. He's got a documentary on, on Netflix called Notorious. All right. And in there you see he's on and Saturday morning. It shows a clip of him. He's like, it's Saturday. Everyone else is hung over or drinking. We're here at the gym. We're training. We're training. He's a craftsman. His craft is fighting. Jerry Seinfeld's craft, comedy, uh, Eminem's craft, rapping, music, anything like that, whatever. So like there's a lot of people who don't want to gather career capital and they'll email me. And the question always goes very much like this. Do you think, all right, so it'll start with like an introduction of what they've been doing. I've been a medical tech for the last six years, or I don't know, I've been a nurse, or I've done this or done that. Now I want more time with my family and friends, a noble pursuit. And they'll say, do you think I could make a good living as a copywriter and work from home and replace this income and do this and do that and do this? And they haven't mentioned, have they ever like tried to write copy, taken a job, what they're up to right now to get going in that craft. It's right. Okay. Can I just stop doing all the hard stuff in my life and replace it with this much easier and much more lucrative stuff? And again, you're setting yourself up for like a world of hurt. If you approach it with that mindset, instead of approaching like, man, I, if, if, if it's more like, man, I saw one of your YouTube channels, I saw you break down, uh, one of those sales letters and I was hooked. I've been breaking down sales letters left and right. I'm wondering like, how can something about, Getting deeper into copy, that's a guy or a girl who are like, okay, you're going to do well. Because one of the cool things, like when I answered someone recently, well, can you make a, a good living if you uh, work really hard? Yes. Yes. Like all you have to do is become a good copywriter. And as he says, and uh, as Cal Newport says, and so good they can't ignore you, you basically can have all the control in the world you want if your skills are rare and valuable. Okay. Good copywriters, especially in the financial niche, there are probably like, a hundred in the world, like really good copywriters in that specific financial niche. And then there's probably a lot of like mediocre and then it just probably plummets. But I'm talking like really good, like consistently performing like professionals. You're probably in like a pool of a hundred if you get there, right? Now you're rare and valuable, i.e. you're going to be in demand. And once you're in demand, you can kind of call the shots a little bit, right? But I mean, the question is like, if I work hard, can I, can I make it or can I do? Yes. Yes, of course. Absolutely. But you can't, you can't skip straight to the part where you're like, oh, I want to work from home and be remote and I don't want to do my job anymore. Right? So this is something that I've gotten over the last couple days. And I, 
I think that this is what happens for something happens. Someone tags me or something. And I get a new, I get a new wave of, of subscribers or something. And then all of a sudden I get that kind of question. Someone even literally said, if I read your book, can I, can I charge someone $2,000 on Monday? He's like, if I pick up your book on Friday, he's like, I don't like my job. Can I get your book on Friday and charge someone $2,000 on Sunday? And I was like, bro, you're what? no, don't do that. Don't do that. You, you have no, you have no, like, that's like saying, Hey man, um, I want to help you. I want to climb this mountain, right? I've never climbed a mountain before, but I'd love to watch a little or read a little book about mountain climbing on Friday, really study that book really hard. And then I want you to, you know, take a rope and head up that mountain and trust me to catch you if you fall. That's basically, I and mean, that's a little bit abstract, but it's the same thing about like, Dude, yeah, that's someone's business, someone's livelihood, uh, someone's marketing. You're gonna make you're gonna make yourself look bad. You're setting yourself up for failure. Okay, so I'm, this this whole live, this is just one of those lives. Like I haven't gone live in a while. I have a little bit of a subject that I want to talk about. It's not completely organized, but I tried to get it into a couple notes here in the paper. So, recapping, Brian says, "Dude, you're the S word. You helped my with my help prom. You've helped me with my health promo." Mom says hi. Hey, ma. Michael says, love analyzing letters, craftsman mindset. Dan says, what's up, homie? Dan's a craftsman. He loves copy too. David remembers that commenter. Yeah, that's gets those kinds of questions kind of get under my skin a little bit. Okay, cool. So two traps, going after the perks, not after mastering the craft, okay, or the skill. Um, second thing, copy is kind of a winner-take-all market. This is an idea I got from uh, So Good They Can't Ignore You by Cal Newport, where you've got your M&Ms and you've got SoundCloud rappers, right? You got Tom Brady's and then you got like everybody else, like all the other quarterbacks that are like, eh, we need a quarterback. When, but there's like, if you could have Tom Brady, you'd get Tom Brady. Not a Pats fan. I actually never liked the Pats, but that's just like, you got to respect work, right? You got Connor McGregor's, everybody else. You got Jerry Seinfeld's, everybody else. That's the way copywriting is. And it's one of those worlds where there's such a small pool, you get really good and really practice the craft. Well, then all that stuff opens up to you, right? Talk about perks. Talk about perks. You could go to law school for years and years and accumulate tons of debt, or you could spend like one year studying sales letters and get passive income that surpasses a lawyer, especially straight out of school, with no debt. Okay? So there's one of your perks. Um, and I think that was really it. I thought I had more. Uh no, I think that'll do it. I'll take questions if anyone's got any questions. Oh, also, like, yeah, I wanted to mention, like, I had to I had to drop a lot of stuff. Don't, oh, yeah, the second trap was don't overlook the climb. I had to drop everything, move, take this job, take the job I had with Agora Financial and not see friends, family, and, like, take a, take a risk. I didn't even know what copywriting was or how to do it, but I was like, okay, I got to dive in and try to get good at this, all right? So... I'm not saying you have to drop everything, move away from your friends, family. I know some people have kids, families, et cetera. What you have to do is try to figure out a way to get the craft into your life and get immersed in it. And if you find that you aren't motivated to get immersed in the craft, that's a huge flag. Good flag. It's a good flag. This probably isn't for you so you can avoid making huge mistakes like all these digital nomad types online who quit their jobs and end up broke and struggling and desperate and writing these horrible blogs that go dark after like three weeks of posting. Okay. Ah, uh, what we got? Comments. On point, telling the game as... Hey, can I push a button? Yes, look at that. On point, telling the game it is. Thank you. It's Patiel. I ask you every time. I don't know how to say it. So, uh, let's see. People have been sold what they want, but don't see what they need. Raul, you nailed it. And I think a lot of it is our fault as copywriters marketers and direct response guys like that is our language it's copywriting right on that note i think i have um i'm sharing my screen hide this well, there's a there's a there's some settings i can i can tinker with that i want to do if i could figure out oh no how do i do the uh here we go banners show this bam i forgot to put this up there Here's, here's where I help people learn how to write copy. If you are interested in, oh my God, why didn't I think of that? If you're interested in, if you're interested in mastering the craft, this is where I help people hone their skills. KyleWriter.com forward slash squad. It's the copy squad inner circle. I help aspiring copywriters get better. We talk about 
Um, tomorrow, I'm going to record my sales letter breakdown for Tuesday. And every every two weeks, I, I do a sales letter breakdown for you, breaking down multi-million dollar sales letters. And every Tuesday in between, we get on a group call and talk coffee. And we look over your marketing stuff, stuff like that. Okay. How do I go back to comments? Right here. Okay, cool. All right. So Raul said people have been sold what they want, but don't see what they need. Yeah. And again, I, like I say, I, I, marketers should take some responsibility for that because we're trying to sell the dream and we are marketers. So we're really good at selling stuff. So a lot of times that happens, but I'll tell you what's cool is every time you buy one of my books at kylewriter.com forward slash book, or someone joins the squad at kylewriter.com forward slash squad. For me, the squad is a way for me to hone my craft. It's not a way for me to make money. I could charge way more for the squad. And I actually have admitted before, the only reason I haven't risen the price yet is because I'm just too lazy to go to the offer page, change it, and then change all the stuff. So the squad for me is a great way to engage with other copywriters and talk copy. I made this for me. This is a, a, a work of passion for me to get more hands on copy and see mistakes and different ways of fixing problems. Copy is a big puzzle to me that I can fix and solve. So as a marketer uh, who who does sell books and products or whatever, like my, my primary income is the copywriting, the craft itself. So I'm okay sitting here telling you, don't buy the book on Friday and try to charge someone $2,000 on Monday. I don't want to make that promise for you. I don't think that's a good that you're going to get yourself in trouble, your reputation, and you're probably going to, I mean, you're probably going to pee off someone on, you know, ruining like some of their marketing campaign or their time. Or It just seems like a bad, just a bad thing to do, man. All right. Mike says, awesome video. Thanks, buddy. Want lucrative profession, need work. Yeah. You got to, I'll tell you what. Okay. Here's another thing that I saw recently or kind of come to realize about happiness. All right. And this is going to go a little woo-woo here. Happiness. I think one of the things that I'm coming to realize about my friends who are unhappy, my relatives who are unhappy and people who I see who are happy is the amount of focus in their life. All right. This, it, it brings a new perspective to the term ignorance is bliss. Okay. So instead of thinking of it as ignorance, think of it as focus because think about your all right, let's, let's start with a job, okay? If, if all I'm caring about is how good of a copywriter I can be, I can turn down all the work that I, like I get, I've gotten job offers on YouTube comments, right? Like I can say, no, I've got a team. I've got uh, my position here. I did get a great offer to uh, join a smaller company called Wealth Press. I'm with them now and I get to help them build the company and be a part of that early. So I'm really excited about that. And that, and I'd love to, and my goal is to build a team of world-class copywriters, a world-class copy team, right? That's my goal. It lined up perfectly. I went for it. Um, so if my focus is to get really good at copy and training people at copy, then I don't care about like, oh, what's this guy making over there? Or, or is this job, can I get, can I get more weekends off if I work on that job? Or, or does this, you know, like I see my friends who are like, ah, I'm in the wrong career. I should be doing that. I should be driving a Lamborghini. I should, but if they were focused on their craft. They wouldn't care. It's the same thing with relationships. People with like wandering eyes and people who can't stay committed are always worried about like, oh, is there something better? Is there something better? Is there something? But if you take that same focus and dedication and you think, okay, I've got this relationship. I, I can, you can make a friendship, a, a romantic relationship, your, friendship your, your relationship with your parents, your mom and dad. And you say, okay, I've got one of these, you know, and you put focus on that and say, I'm going to, I'm going to make this a good one. Right. And you don't worry about the other things out there. Those people, I, I've noticed this too. And I know I noticed it because I was guilty of it all the way up until I started associating with, basically with millionaires because at Agora Financial, there's so many successful people who are really smart and driven. And I started to see how they behaved. And uh, I, I've noticed that those people, those people are the happiest. They know what they want. They go after it and they're focused and they don't worry about what other people are doing. And they don't worry about what's better or what else is out there. They, they worry about getting better about their craft. And I think that was a big, like, weird sort of epiphany. That's kind of woo-woo, kind of copywriting that I realized about happiness, success. It's all kind of tethered together that way. All right, cool. Moving along. Raul says, in many of the courses, I'm, I'm, I missed that one. Uh, by the way, got my first freelance gig. Not anything crazy for the pros, but someone gave me 500 to write copy for a landing page. Not sure I could have done it without being part of the squad. Michael, that's fantastic. Michael's one of our members in the Copy Squad Inner Circle. He's been hanging out, been getting all the cool advice and breakdowns and trainings and all the stuff that's in there now. We've got so much content in there because I think the, the squad is 
I don't know how many, several months old. So it's, we've got like a dozen of everything now. Dan, get the book and join the squad. Thanks, Dan. Stuart, great sound and picture. Thanks very much. Yeah, I hope everyone's liking. Uh, I hope everyone's liking the uh, uh, StreamYard format. Rob says, join me and start shaving the dome. Dude, all right, look, stop. There's a light directly above my head, okay? If it wasn't shining straight on my head, see? It's not as bad now, all right? I ain't got time for this. I'm, 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 I'm doing my thing. All right, you're, you're saving some people a lot of unnecessary suffering. Mastery comes before the perks. Exactly, exactly. By the way, uh... I'll see you guys at Copy Squad. No, no. Copy Chief Live. I'll see you at Copy Chief Live. I believe Stuart's going to be there. Rob's going to be there. Anybody else who's going to Copy Chief Live, that's next weekend, next Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. So if you guys can be there, I'll be there. All right. I'll take any more last second questions, and then I'm heading out. I'm going to go to my YouTube, see if any late questions are, are popping through yet. Oh, wait. I got to get Rob's. Uh, how do I get Rob off here and get my link back up? Boom. All right. One one more moment to check for comments, and I'm out of here. Waiting for it to load. Smash like if you haven't smashed like already. All right. That'll do it. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, I really hope you got something out of this. This one was a little ranty, a little unorganized, but I do appreciate all you, and I uh, appreciate all your comments. Rob, I'll be there five days, baby. <laughs> and someone needs a life. All right. All right, that's it. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you want to get better at copy, check out Copy Squad Inner Circle. That's where I help other writers uh, hone their craft. Thanks so much for tuning in. Peace out, Copy Squad.